So it's been roughly 18 months since Wahoo announced the acquisition of Speedplay. That Speedplay, of course, are these uh, pedals and this entire pedal brand. And way back at its like prime, Speedplay had a ton of different pedal varieties. But as part of the acquisition, one of Wahoo's main goals was to simplify it. And they did that. They brought it down to four core Speedplay models, that being the Nano Comp Zero and Aero, uh, basically at different kind of weight and price points. But I'm not really going to talk about that, because honestly, I don't really care about pedals that much. I care about power meters, but not pedals. I've got an entire drawer full of pedals here. Like all the pedals you can think about from every brand is in there and they mostly just sit in there. Uh, instead, I want to talk about the one thing that they announced but didn't fully announce, which is a new Powerlink Zero. And that's going to go ahead and take one of their Speedplay Zero pedals and make it an inch power meter. And officially, they've only talked about a few things and one image. But unofficially, those few things tell us pretty much everything. So let me show you the image right here. This is the official image they released. But here's the thing. I use Lightroom. I use Lightroom every single day. And it took like one and a half seconds to make that image this image. And this explains what's going on. And now, as you can see from that image, there's one thing that obviously stands out, pods. Sure, they have their Speedplay Zero pedal. Uh, this is the old one. The new one is somewhere with DHL. I'll let you know when it gets here. Uh, but this is the pod design of the Favero Asiomo. So you got the pod on the side here and the power meter pedal right there versus a non-pod design on something like the Garmin uh, Vector 3 pedals or the PowerTap uh, P2 or P1 pedals. Uh, now, there's nothing intrinsically wrong with the pods. I think a lot of people have worried the pods over time be a problem, but look, they're not a problem. Like we, We're way past the phase of pods being an issue. The only real issue is aesthetics, and eh, you know, they're pods. Uh, but in the case of the Speedplay spindle, there just isn't a lot of room in the pedal itself. Uh, so if you kind of look at these stacked, it kind of makes a bit more sense here as to what's going on. And you can start to see why here. In terms of where you can stash electronics, battery, uh, communication stuff, all the things that you need, strain gauges, there is not a lot of room in this spindle here or in the pedal body itself, especially once you include the provisions you'll need to protect all those electronics. Uh, versus something like the Vector pedal, there's tons of room. And look how thick that is in comparison. All the places that you can stash stuff in this whole area here, in the spindle, uh, even in down here, uh, the actual portion that you screw into your crank arm. The same is even true for Favero. I'd argue Favero can probably get away with ditching their pod in a future version if they wanted to, uh, because they're not much different from a pedal body standpoint. They make the base a little bit thicker, and they'd be able to stick it in there. But when it comes to a Speedplay pedal, there's not much there. Now, Garmin said years ago they believed that they could go ahead and get all this junk inside of a Speedplay spindle and pedal. And whether or not that's true here in 2021, I don't know. But we do know from Wahoo is a couple of the core specs. They've announced basically like four things. Uh, one, the pedal will be stainless steel. Two, it'll be 276 grams total for the set. So that's 138 uh, grams per pedal, which would put it really low in the power meter weight weigh-in. Uh, for example, Vector 3 is 161 grams. The power tap uh, P1, P2, but 215, then drop a little more, it's 200 grams for the P2s. Uh, Favero Asioma, the lightest of the bunch is 150 grams. So this is definitely below that. They also announced it's gonna be a dual sensing set. So that means you're gonna get a left and a right uh, power meter pedal, as opposed to just a single leg pedal. Uh, they they said they are not going to at launch anyways announce a single leg variant so it's going to be the dual set only that makes sense they want to kind of upsell the premium side of it uh, and it'll sell starting this summer uh, and then summer of course is the broad range from june all the way to almost the end of september so anywhere in that time frame pricing we don't know but i'm going to talk about that oh and if you're finding this video interesting consider subscribing there's plenty more sport technology stuff coming up over the next uh fairly near term that you probably won't want to miss out so let's talk about like the four to five core things that i think people are going to be asking about number one is accuracy will it be accurate now there's claimed accuracy and then there's actual accuracy uh claimed accuracy my bet is plus or minus one percent to plus or minus two percent pretty much the industry norm but actual accuracy is going to be much tougher and i cannot overstate how hard building a pedal based power meter is uh, in terms of like things that are hard to do in the sports uh, cycling tech industry there's building a trainer is hard uh, building a smart bike is hard building a standalone power meter like crankbikes power meter is hard and then there's building a pedal based power meter and that is like off the charts hard there are so many companies that have tried with so much money 
and fail. And if they didn't fail outright, they took many, many years to fail, um, or they took many, many years to eventually get a product to market, costing many millions of dollars. Uh, and Wahoo certainly has the engineers to pull this off. They have engineers that understand power and understand a lot of these components. I just look at the industry and how long it takes most companies to come to fruition with a pedal-based power meter, typically two to three years. It's been 18 months since Wahoo acquired uh, Speedplay, though they were working on some of the stuff before that, so that gives them a bit of a jump start. But somewhat ironically enough, I think the best quote on how difficult building a pedal-based power meter is comes from a company that tried to make a Speedplay-based uh, cleat power meter, uh, which was Brim Brothers. And Barry Redman, the founder and CEO of that company, uh, said pretty far into the process when I was testing out one of their pedals at the time, uh, said that getting to 95% of the way done is easy. It's the last 5% that kills you. Uh, and ultimately, for their company, it was the last 5% that killed them. They eventually went out of business because they couldn't get over that hill of all the little nuances of trying to get a pedal-based power meter to work. And I wonder whether or not Wahoo better complete this by the summer. I really hope they do, and I'm excited to see them to try to pull that off. I think it's great, but I think it's going to be a bit of a tough road. So the next question is price. Wahoo hasn't announced this yet, and I think it's probably going to be about the same as Vector3. So Vector3 is a thousand bucks. The Fivero Osceoma pedals here's right here, uh, is about $715 or $19, or something like that for the dual-sided set. Um, I don't really see a reason for Wahoo to undercut Garmin on this. Uh, Wahoo is traditionally a premium brand from a pricing standpoint. Uh, so while they could do like an $8.99 for the fun of it or something like that, I'm not sure there's a good reason to. I think you know they've got a unique offering in a speed play pedal that you know that market wants uh, quite a bit, and so I don't know if there's a good reason to undercut. Uh, inversely, there's not really a good reason to go beyond Vector's pricing either. I think doing that would be a mistake as well. So my money is on it being $9.99, but we'll see what happens this summer. Next, what is battery life? So in the case of Vera Osiomo, these have a claimed uh, 50 hours of battery life in the rechargeable pods right there. Uh, Garmin has a claimed 120, 150 hours or so with their coin cell battery situation. Uh, undoubtedly, the pod that we see from Wahoo looks like it'll be rechargeable pod. I can't imagine they go to coin cell. Uh, certainly, they would have seen Garmin's woes in that area and, and known better. Uh, but the difference between Favero and Wahoo is basically like three years or so, uh, which is a long time in battery tech. If we look at the SRM X pedals, uh, they start off at roughly acclaimed 30 hours of battery life. Uh, but over the next few months, we're going to see that pretty much double in battery life claims because of improvements in battery life technology uh, they're going to be able to incorporate into the manufacturing line going forward. So the same is probably true of Havero as well. If they were to go ahead and redo this entire pod into you know, 2020 or 2021 tech, they'd probably see much higher levels of battery life. And that's not just the battery itself, it's all the componentry that depends on it. It's, it's the AMP Plus and Bluetooth Smart chipsets, it's the strain gauges, it's all the components underneath there, and the battery drain both in standby as well as active use. So my bet on battery life for Wahoo is probably between 50 and 75 hours kind of out of the gate, but maybe improving that over time as they sort of in the battery life and optimize a bit more. Most companies tend to optimize battery life is the very last thing they do in their sort of entire production life cycle. Next, will there be any form of cycling dynamics? Obviously, both Garmin and then now more recently, uh, Favero have that. Uh, in the case of Wahoo, I think it's like a maybe later sort of thing. Uh, keeping in mind that a couple years ago, Wahoo and Pioneer actually linked up to show Pioneer's advanced pedaling metrics, which are roughly like cycling dynamics, just by a different name, uh, but they were not following the official and plus standard for that. So Wahoo has experience in that particular realm, but it's different data fields. So they would need to go ahead and update their Wahoo element bolts and roam uh, head units, as well as their Wahoo rival watch to support those data fields uh, to be able to go into the AMP plus cycling dynamics realm. Now, keeping in mind that cycling dynamics is things like pedal center offset and all that kind of stuff. It's not just basic power and left right split. That's considered like a baseline that uh, will of course be there for any bike computer that uses the Wahoo uh, PowerLink zeros. Okay, now, well, there are more like technical nuancey type questions, like things like, well, auto is zero, and can you do a manual calibration with a uh, hanging weight and all that kind of stuff? I think probably a non-technical question that's interesting is whether or not Wahoo will license or consider licensing the Speedplay pedal to other companies. Uh, and when Wahoo first announced the acquisition of Speedplay, 
one of the things they talked about is that they wanted to move away from Speedplay's incredibly litigious uh, MO. Basically, they were known that if, if you upset Speedplay in some way, shape, or form, you were getting sued. And Wahoo wanted to step back away from that. And we've seen them pretty much do that over the last 18 months. They haven't, to my knowledge, sued anyone over Speedplay-related things. Uh, so one of the questions I asked way back when was if another power meter company came to Wahoo and said, we want to build a Speedplay power meter, if Garmin or if Avero or SRAM or whoever you want, um, would Wahoo allow that? Would they allow them to license a Speedplay uh, tech, which is all patent at this point? Uh, and surprisingly, back there, Wahoo's CEO uh, and founder, Chip, said yes. He said, uh, we have a ton of patents that cover every aspect of the pedal in that fashion. But I think we'll be more open with others, and we won't be considered litigious. We won't be hard to work with. He then went on to say that he wouldn't be opposed to working with other companies in the same way Wahoo today works with numerous other partners on a variety of projects. Uh, so fast forward to last night, again, 18 months later, do they still feel the same way? And I asked him again on a call last night, uh, and he said, quote, I wouldn't say I would turn it down. Uh, but he did know that the complexities are much tougher in a speed play spindle, as they're finding out, um, because it's a much smaller space. It's, uh, there's just not a lot of room to stick stuff like we talked earlier on. But he ultimately said, I would entertain it if someone came to us with a request. Uh, and that's good. I think it's good to hear that offer is still on the table for other companies. It doesn't sound like any companies have come to Wahoo yet uh, with an offer, at least maybe a serious offer anyways, to be able to do this. Uh, now, whether or not Wahoo eventually agrees to that, if a Garmin or Favero or SRAM or someone else wanted to come to them uh, with that offer, who knows? And whether or not those two parties could you know, come to an agreement on making that work well, technically as well as uh, from a licensing standpoint, again, we don't know. But I thought it was worthwhile mentioning that. So where do we stand on pedal-based power meters going forward in 2021? I think for power meters in general, 2021 will be an incredibly strong year. Every single company in this space is either overdue um, or on target for a refresh based on historical kind of refresh life cycles. And so I think this will be like a banner year versus last two to three years have been like nothing burger. There's been basically nothing. And part of that's COVID and part of that is power meter companies getting more mature uh, and there's less opportunity for startups to get into this space uh, and bring in power meters. And certainly we might see things like the IQ, never mind, we're probably not going to see that anytime soon, but we could see that. And that, I think that'd be great if we do. I want to see more competition in this space, you know, a year on from what I last talked about uh, trying out those prototypes that maybe we'll see a final production model uh, in the works. So stay tuned for plenty more sports tech stuff and plenty more power meter stuff. I think it's going to be a good year, uh, probably between spring and year bike, which is typically the end of August or that time frame, depending on whether or not that event actually happens. As always with power meters, though, they benefit you more if they're on your bike than if you're looking at them on a web page. Uh, so I wouldn't necessarily like wait forever. I would kind of look at the options, figure out whether or not these options make sense for you based on your pedal preferences and based on your budget uh, and just execute on them and get faster racing and training with them. With that, have a good one.